how to record your video game consoles using an external capture card. So first of all, excuse the shaky camera and also the kind of messy setup. Those are my sunflower seats. I, I could have cleaned that up before I recorded this. Oh well. So let me autofocus or manual focus. This camera doesn't have autofocus. So that is an external capture card. An external capture card is any kind of capture card that sits outside of your computer. There are internal ones, and I'll have some linked in the description. And these internal ones sit inside your computer's PCI Express slot. They're not too difficult to install, you just have to take off the side panel of your computer and then you're going to need to install it like any other graphics card. So if you don't know how to install internal capture cards, just look up any number of graphics card installation tutorials on YouTube. The process is exactly the same. So for these external ones, you usually have something like USB 3.0 or Thunderbolt, depending on the card you want to get. In this case, this is the Blackmagic Intensity series of capture cards. As far as I know, they only make internal ones, unless, I mean, sorry, they only make external capture cards for the Blackmagic these days, unless you want to get the 4K internal capture cards, but nobody, uh, nobody can really record in 4K with a console to begin with, so it's kind of pointless. But anyway, for these external ones, you have a few inputs and outputs. You have your USB or Thunderbolt here, and then you have inputs and then outputs on either side. So the inputs have components, and you have RCA, S-Video, and HDMI. Sorry if it's a little bit blurry. And on the outputs, you have the exact same thing. So the way you set this up is that you have to get a cable to come out of the back of your system, in this case, my PlayStation 3. And that cable, which normally goes to your TV, will instead go to the inputs on your capture card. And let me see if I can get it to focus again. If you notice there, you can see audio in, video in, and then inputs for the various connectors. Now on the outputs, you'll stick an HDMI cable into the HDMI out, and that'll get sent on over to your TV or your monitor, wh whichever you want to use. This will allow you to play your this will allow you to play your system and record it at the same time while also playing on your TV at the same time. If you didn't have an output, you'd have to play on the really bad preview uh, menu in the Blackmagic software, and that's just not fun. Now, why am I using Component instead of HDMI? Well, the PlayStation 3 does support Component, or sorry, HDMI, but the PlayStation 3's HDMI signal is encrypted, and this will not capture that encrypted signal. You can buy strippers for that encryption, they're about $20, but that's another piece of hardware you have to worry about and another HDMI cable you have to use, so I would just instead use Component, because Component allows you to still capture in 1080i, and that's pretty much the same thing as 1080p when it comes to uploading to YouTube. Now for any other system on the planet, the Wii U, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, you can use HDMI. On the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, you have to turn off the HDCP encryption for the HDMI signal to play, uh, to record the video games. That encryption for those two systems will turn back on when you're watching a movie, which means you just can't use this to record your movies. The Xbox 360 and Wii U don't have HDCP whatsoever, so you don't even have to worry about it. So, in other words, the PlayStation 3 is the only system today that you have to use component cables to capture. Awesome. But, that's not that big of a deal. People seem to be playing it a little bit less anyway. And then, of course, you're going to have a USB cable go out to your computer. Now, USB 3.0 is not supported... USB, sorry about that, USB 3.0 is not supported on all systems. If you don't know if you have USB 3.0, then you'll want to either contact your computer's manufacturer, or you can look around your system, and if you see any blue USB ports, chances are it's USB 3.0. Sometimes, even if you have USB 3.0, this capture card may not work with it, and that's just because the capture card sometimes can't make up its mind what it wants to work with. These go for about $200, so if you buy one on Amazon and you find out it doesn't work, you can always send it back within 30 days. Again, I'll have links to this in the description. The next part of this video will be explaining how to use the software to actually capture your video for your Blackmagic.
So now that we have our capture card from Blackmagic set up, it's time to download and use the software. So to download it, you'll want to go to blackmagicdesign.com. I'll have a link to this in the description. And then click on support, click on capture and playback over here, and then download the drivers and the desktop video. Now, for some reason, for me, desktop video 10.5 flat out does not work. It will not record anything from my capture card. So I had to come all the way down here to uh, desktop video 10.1.1. And this one has an older control panel, but that's fine. I mean, it works, and that's what's good for me. So you can download it for whichever operating system you have. And then you're going to want to click on start and type in control panel. And go to the control panel in Windows. And then here you'll want to type in black and you want to find the Blackmagic Design Control Panel. On the newer ones, they renamed the control panel to Desktop Video, and I think it's its own pro uh, program now, so it's a little bit easier to find. You just have to type in Blackmagic and hope that you find the Desktop Video, but if you're downloading the 10.1.1 like I have to use, then this is what your control panel will look like. So for the output on the shuttle, the All Outputs Active is your only option, uh, and that's what it should set to and for your input this will be whatever input you have so for me I'm recording my PlayStation 3 so I'm using component but if you're using HDMI you'll want to use HDMI video and audio you can also use HDMI video and RCA audio or some of these other options if you so desire but since I'm using component that's what I'm gonna click everything else I'm gonna keep the same and I'm also going to hit OK I'm just gonna hit cancel since it's already set correctly now when you're ready to begin recording, turn on your system. I don't know if you can hear my PlayStation 3 kind of whirring over there, but turn on your system and then click start and then open up Blackmagic Media Express. So then you want to click on the Log and Capture tab and if you're lucky, everything will be set up automatically and you won't have to set any options and your console will show up here. If you're not lucky or if you're more like a typical person, you'll have to click on Edit and then go to Preferences and then change the things here so you can get it to show up. So the first thing you need to do on your system, and let me just turn on my controller here, you want to set the resolution on your system to 720p. That way you can make sure that it works. Now on the PlayStation, for some reason, you have to go all the way down to display options, and you'll just want to make sure that your video output says 720p. Once you know that it works at 720p, then you can set it to 7 to 1080i or 1080p, and you can try different resolutions based on your system. But anyway, 720p will work for almost every single system, so that's the one you'll want to set it to. For the project video format, make sure you set it to 720p 59.94. If you have it set to 1080i like I do, then you'll want it to be 1080i 59.94. It will not work in 60, and it probably won't work in 50. And if it does work in 60, you're probably going to have audio synchronization issues, so make sure it's 59.94 and you won't have those. For the file format, you're going to want AVI Motion JPEG. If you set it to either of these, you're going to need your hard drive. You're going to need hard drives in a RAID setup to be able to record because these are extremely high bitrate formats. They're pretty much lossless formats and one hard drive usually isn't enough to record them so set it to AVI Motion JPEG you won't have to worry about that and even a USB 2.0 drive an external drive will be able to record with this format uh, you can check or uncheck this one doesn't really matter for your audio and video you will want to select a drive that makes you happy and same with your still frames I'll go over still frames in a second by default, these two options are checked. Make sure you uncheck those. And by default, these two options are not checked. Be sure that you check both of these. Uh, continue playback when in the background is good. If you're recording and you want to open up Google Chrome or something to look up something and you don't want it to end your recording, leave these the same, then click OK. When you're ready to begin recording, you can just click on this little exclamation point and then you can click on Capture and this allows you to name it without recording immediately. So then you can name it something like tutorial and then click OK and the recording begins. And then you'll be able to uh, move around and it'll pick up everything. Make sure that you have audio levels here. If you don't have audio showing up down here then you don't have your audio set up correctly in either your settings for the console because for the PlayStation I have to tell my audio to use uh, RCA or you don't have your capture card set up correctly. So when you're finished recording, you just click on capture and there's your file. 
Now you can either go to where you saved it, in my case it would be here, there's my, uh, there's my black magic recording, or you can click on it in the menu here, and you can click on playback, and you can click on play. So I'll just pause that right now. Now the thing is, about black magic, it is still possible that your audio and your video won't be synchronized even if you have all these settings correct. That usually happens when something isn't fast enough. So either your hard drive isn't fast enough or your USB port isn't actually running at USB 3 speeds or maybe your overall system just isn't good enough. So to test this the best way, you'll want to record for five minutes, watch your video, make sure that your audio and video are synchronized, and if that's good, then you're probably in the clear, but afterwards I would still record for about 20 to 30 minutes, and then make sure that your audio and video are synchronized even after that length. If your audio and video are synchronized after 20 to 30 minutes, then you'll be able to record forever without having to worry about desynchronization. So uh, that's the basics for getting recorded with this. If you just want to take a snapshot, just click this camera and whatever is on your screen, it'll save it to wherever you had that uh, here. So in my case, it saves it to documents. And that's basically it. Uh, when you're ready to edit it, you can throw it into an editing program and then upload it to YouTube. So that is it for my dog just sneezed in the background. I don't know if you heard that. That's a great end of the video though, thanks Jet. So anyway, that is it for how to record consoles with your Blackmagic hardware. Thank you for watching this video.